Hi, my name's Alex Masters. I'm a technologist, designer, and practice-based researcher at Coventry University, and I'm part of the Game Changers team. This is what I normally look like, but for today I'll talk to you from the world of Catoba miners in Minecraft. My research focuses on the concept of frugal education, which is the application of frugal innovations within an educational context to foster affordable, practical and sustainable education practice. And in the spirit of this, I'm joined today by Dr. James York, a second language teacher at Tokyo Denki University in Japan. I first met James after searching the web looking for game-based learning research that might focus on the topic of Japanese language learning for English speakers. After a quick chat online, we realised that we were familiar with each other's work, as James had also been following the work of Game Changers from afar. I hit the jackpot when I came across James's amazing Katoba Miners project, an online community that uses Minecraft as a game-based learning environment for learning Japanese as a second language. I'll let James explain the name shortly. Katoba Miners is the perfect example of frugal education in action. Using trailing edge technologies that have been around for many years, but leveraging them in innovative ways to achieve a unique learning design. A design that's immersive enough to give you the sensation of face-to-face -face teaching and flexible enough to adapt to a student's changing needs and environments. The most recent example of this being the COVID-19 pandemic, which has had a profound impact on the delivery of education provision. Rather than grinding to a halt under strict lockdown conditions, the Catoba Miners community was able to adapt and flourish providing a platform for language learning that could be accessed by anyone regardless of physical location. All they need is a computer made in the last 10 years and a stable internet connection. Katoma Miners provides a practical and sustainable solution to online language learning. James has fostered a vibrant online community, leveraging Discord as a virtual learning environment to complement the quote in-class experience and including the community in the design process to deliver a shining example of frugal education in practice. I'll now hand over to James himself to further explain Katoba Miners and give you a tour of the amazing world that James and his community of language learners have built. Thanks for the intro, Alex, and welcome to Katoba Miners, the Minecraft server for learning Japanese. So how did this project come about? Well, I am an English teacher at a university in Japan, and my research is on the affordances of games as language learning tools. And as part of that research, I made this Minecraft world and it didn't look as grand as this in the beginning. It was designed as a server for teaching Japanese students English. So it started as an English language learning server, but I invited a number of Redditors, people that use Reddit to come and help my students learn uh, English. And once the course finished, my Japanese students kind of left the server and I was left with um, a population of students that wanted to learn Japanese. So we flipped this, the concept of the, the server on its head from an English learning server to a Japanese learning server. And since then I've had many wonderful builders come on here and create these buildings as a kind of immersive environment for learning Japanese. Okay, so here we are in front of one of the learning buildings. Inside this building are lessons for students. Each floor has a different lesson. So the contextual challenges that I'm trying to address here are the fact that one, it's difficult to be able to speak Japanese in um, your locality, for example. Um, in the UK, Japanese is not a major language that people learn in school. So the affordances of this virtual world allow people to come together to speak the language. Um, learning by doing is something that Minecraft is very good um, for because you can create activities as a teacher that focus on specific language points. And finally, um, I am trying to create a learning community around these tools of Minecraft and of course, Discord as well. So those are the three things that I'm trying to um, address with this particular world. Speaking the language, doing uh, learning by doing, and finally, creating a community around the server. Okay, first of all, talking about the playfulness of the server. Of course, Minecraft is a game that's very popular with children and people of all ages, really. So by utilizing Minecraft, it's already kind of playful. But um, in terms of the activity development as well, 
uh, behind us here is a guess who activity so you can see there are a number of characters all with different um, makeup and attire and eye color and, and things like this that we can then use as a pair work activity to practice items of clothing or eyes body, body parts you know all of these kinds of things so the, the server really lends itself to this playful um, game-based um, learning approach really Okay, in terms of the inclusivity of the server, um, being an online world, of course, uh, anybody can join from anywhere as long as they have um, a Minecraft account, an official Minecraft account, not a hacked one as well. Now, one might say that um, they that having people have to buy Minecraft to join this server is, is not as frugal as it could be. Um, in reply to that, I actually own about 40 accounts myself, which I have lent out to players that want to join the server and they use it for as long as they like for free so n not only do they not need minecraft um, they they don't need to travel here they don't need any expensive equipment minecraft is, is a game that's been around for oof, over 10 years now i believe so it's not um, the newest game it doesn't it's not a, a graphics card hog it um is it runs on any, any machine really i think it even runs on um, a Raspberry Pi or things like this. So the game itself is is uh, very sustainable, and um, the the world, of course, is is free to join, free to play. And in terms of the inclusivity of people on here, we do not force people to speak. Um, I mentioned speaking earlier, but they also can output via text chat. So that's also an option that people can do here. They don't need to reveal their identity at any point during the the lessons so we have you know um, females males um, those in between those that don't mention we have all walks of life of uh, all walks of lives of people that join the server and what you are seeing right now is a specific area where players have the opportunity to build their avatar um, to kind of cement themselves as a member of the community here so again just showing off the the community nature of the server In terms of the impact of the server, uh, I know multiple people that have gone on to pass the Japanese language proficiency test uh, after doing activities here and becoming motivated to learn Japanese to a higher level. And I've also had, conversely, I've had English learners, I've had Japanese students of mine um, come onto the server as Japanese teachers, but then become very proficient in English at the same time. So I've seen the impact of lots of different people learning lots of different languages here. So that was a brief introduction to the Kotoba Miners Minecraft server and the some of the activities and learning uh, materials that we have here. Uh, to end this chat, I invite you to come and see one of the prime examples of a collaborative building activity that took place on the server where a group of students that were interested in Japanese history got together to recreate a kind of traditional uh, palace or, you know, castle uh, with, well, I'm not sure how to describe it, but, you know, all of these different buildings that would have been in the original kind of building, the the ramparts, the turrets, the, you know, the windows for, for shooting, um, you know, invaders and things like that. So they, they got together, built this, and we created a kind of, PvP mini game activity around it so that everybody could enjoy it. So yeah, if you have any questions or you'd like to learn more about the server, you can leave a comment below or you can check the description of the video where you'll find links to um, the this this world, also the Cotaba Miners Discord where you can come and chat with us over there as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and Alex, thanks for being a great host. Thanks, James. So now we're going to have a, a bit of an informal chat with me and James um, based on my experiences of Cotterbur Miners uh, as kind of like a mini interview, I guess. Mm. Um, so as somebody so, that has experienced Cotterbur Miners as a learner, um, how, how did you feel about it? Because I guess I'm very 
subjective. I've, I've been here and been using it for many years now, but as a learner coming in fresh, what did it feel like? It was great. I mean, I, I've looked, I've tried to get into Japanese language learning before. And as I explained at the beginning of the, uh, the talk, um, it was something I've always been interested in and finding your stuff online just immediately got me, me interested in the idea. So it's very difficult being a long way away from Japan and not having anyone around me that speaks Japanese to, to really get into it. It's all right reading from a textbook, but it's definitely not in any way engaging compared to a person face-to-face -face, uh, learning. So for me, I think the Minecraft experience really does immerse me in the experience in a way that I don't even think you would get from a normal classroom environment, say in the UK, if you were doing a, a Japanese course at university or in a school. So, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of VR and AR stuff in general for for this sort of thing anyway, but the reason I bring that up is because I... I find just using being in the Minecraft environment, like the universe, it feels way more immersive to me than a, a than a VR experience usually does. That's I don't know kind what it is. I think counterintuitive, but yeah, I understand that. Yeah, it, it really does. I, I've always found that I, I get more immersed in in this style. I think because I'm more in control of what's happening. Um, I do tend to get a bit dizzy from VR, so perhaps mm -hmm. it's just my personal preference, but. Uh, the idea of being able to move into different spaces very quickly. I, I think VR can be quite clumsy at times, whereas in this, I do feel like I've got complete control. I can do whatever. And you have the ability to sort of transport me to different classrooms and so on. Mm. So this was great. We were just talking outside before this chat and um, you, you said, oh, we've got a recording studio in Cotaba Minor. So this is where we are now in these little couches, just having a bit of a, a back and forth. Um, so again, it just, it really does feel like you move into different spaces and, and there's a different experience and, and it kind of sets it up for what you're about to do. Yeah, there was a very specific reasons that I chose um, Minecraft over other tools as well. Um, if you're familiar with things like Second Life, um, which are very yeah. kind of, well, I'd describe it as a kind of stoic, um, bare, um, open world where you have to generate your own content. But the problem with Second Life for me is that it's it's kind of a very messy GUI and it's not intuitive and it takes a long time to get things made. Um, and then the other end of the spectrum is like um, massively multiplayer online games like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, these games are clearly appe appealing for their kind of ludic and game-like uh, properties, well, because they're a game mainly. But unfortunately, as a teacher, there's no kind of customizability of those worlds. So right smack bang in between, uh, I found that Minecraft had the very shallow learning curve, a very uncluttered, simple GUI, and um, very easy to make content as a teacher. Um, so I think it does really fit that niche, that gap for teachers that want to develop things quickly. And, and like you said, you talked about creating these different spaces. Um, it, it's quite easy to do it that in Minecraft. So yeah yeah it's very I the i think i think the iterative design of, of everything in here that you can just build what you need when you need it and and if you if you do a, a different sort of class session if it doesn't go well you you can very quickly adapt um the, what it is you're teaching or the environment that you're teaching in which i think is is just so so dynamic i think that works really well mm. and um, like, and, like and lego also, it's very intuitive isn't it as well so it's super easy to do like you mentioned so yeah, I think there's that that kind of familiarity that you get from Minecraft, uh, from yeah, the Lego experience, I guess. Um, and I just find just because it's very open, open to access and do the do the t the lessons, but also open in the in the freedom to express yourself in here. I just feel like that's not something I would think you would get in a VR experience. You, you don't normally have that level of autonomy that you might have here. It's just a lot more creative and collaborative. Um, in this environment, I think that's what I found really helpful about it. Mm. Um, and in any classes I've ever done in a language, being in this space, even if it's just passive, like being in the in the in the uh, room or in the environment, just uh, definitely kind of aids in the, uh, I guess, absorption of the the, the learning. 
yeah, I mean, the more senses that you're using while you're learning, like if you can smell it and touch it and taste it and hear it, then it's going to be a, a deeper learning, isn't it? So I guess having a teacher on a screen versus being in a virtual space with a teacher running around with, with other students is, is more immersive and help, helpful uh, in terms of learning. So, yeah. Definitely. I think especially with, with the pandemic, um, it, it did feel like an escape to a place, uh -huh. you know, that I can actually, especially being stuck in, indoors all the time during lockdown, to be able to go into the Minecraft environment and then and move around in it which is something actually on a, on a similar note i started playing uh zelda on the switch i'm not a big big gamer so to speak so i don't really sit down for hours on him playing games i tend to get very uh uh sort of bored quickly in that scenario but mm. because zelda is really open uh, I, I found myself kind of exploring a lot more and spending a lot, a lot more time playing a game um and that's I say that because it reminds me of this, like mm. coming into this space, it makes me want to stay. It makes me want to, to hang out. And even after lessons, we we found that I, we would sit and have chats for like a couple of, literally a couple of hours, <laughs> just, just moving around in the space, just talking. And I guess for me, that was like being out in a park with friends, which was something we couldn't do. Um, so yeah, just a, a really, really interesting experience. And I'd recommend it to anyone listening to, to get involved and, and to try it out because I think uh, it's very powerful, even if it's to take part in in sort of James's classes or whether or not you want to use it for your own teaching practice. I would definitely talk to James um, for some sort of advice and and tips along on achieving that. So thank you, James. I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thanks for coming along to the lessons.